And jealousy leads into to anger. You see, I'm jealous. I don't like you looking at my wife, but you keep doing it. What? You want me to be what? Slap the other cheek? I'm going to forgive you? No. I'm going to kick your ass. I probably won't be able to, but nevertheless, it'll be a good try. <laughs> Jealousy is caused by attachment. Attachment is caused by you spending a lot of physical time, emotional time, intellectual time, and God forbid if the two of you shouldn't read the Bible, that's spiritual time. And whenever those attachments are in jeopardy, you will react, and you have every goddamn right to react. It's your life, it's your investment. There is also this other thing. You also love. You don't want anyone crapping on the things you love. And man, when you love something, you have your soul in it. I don't know if you've ever experienced, like if you've uh, ever been in love and it's new, it's like a couple minutes old. And then your companion says, I'm going to go to Safeway, buy something, I'll be right back. And you say, let's just say you're hetero. And let's say you're, you view your woman as profoundly attractive. And you say, wait a minute. She wants to go to Safeway, buy herself, buy milk and come back? Are you kidding me? If she goes to Safeway, walk through the aisles, Joe will look at her. Mike will look at her, her phone will ring, she'll text, not going to allow that. You say, Joanne, let me come with you. Really? Yeah. Now she thinks you're going with her because you love her. Nah, you're going with her because you don't want anyone to steal her. You don't want anyone to look at her. You own her. And there is nothing wrong with that. I know you may not like the idea of ownership, you know, it's liberal these days. We don't own anything. I think the way you put it is not necessarily what you mean. No, we own things. <laughs> no, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I think you said I could like, some people might take it literally. Yeah, the, the, it's okay, let them take it literally, who cares? <clears throat> Now, I'm going to give you a different scenario as to why sometimes it's the case where people are not jealous. You know, jealousy leads to her cousin envy. Envy leads to her distant cousin resentment. And these are all disturbing emotions. They may be somewhat healthy, but they're nevertheless disturbing. If you're not attached, you're not invested. And that could mean two things. You're either like a god who can survive on your own, you're profoundly self-sufficient, or you've turned into a savage. So let me tell you what it means to be a savage. <clears throat> because when you're a savage, there is no jealousy when it comes to companionships or perhaps other things as well. Let's say you're my son. Like all sons, you were born accidentally. I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but nevertheless, I enjoyed sex, and here you are. I realized that even though I want to be around you, life doesn't allow me. And I come home every single day angry. What do kids want, especially during formative years? But you want love, you want attention, you want care, you want to be touched. You want a hug, you want a kiss, and you demand the same thing from your mom. But 
You never get those. Add to it the fact that the friction between you, me and your mom gets so intense that one day we sit you son and we say, the great Pharaoh Ramses, your mom and I have decided. Hawaii? Disneyland? No, divorce. I know, it's beautiful. The brave new world. And you say, well, what is that? Well, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to go to Disneyland, I say. Your mom is going to go uh, to International 48th. <laughs> and you say, well, I'll be good. I won't smoke anymore. And you're only like a year and a half. I won't drink anymore. I won't do porn anymore. I won't scream. I won't want anything anymore. I'm okay with this pair of shoes for the next five years. And your mom and I tell you, it's not about you, honey. Your mom just is evil. <laughs> and then your mom pulls you to the side and looks at it and says, Ramses, I'm sorry for everything your father said. He's Satan. And then you say, what the hell is this, man? I didn't ask to come here. I am here. All I want is these people to, like, give me Cheerios once in a while. And they can't even do that. And then at the age of two or three or five or six, you got to figure out what the hell just happened to you. You want to love, you can't. You want to be loved, but there is no one to love you. I mean, they want to, but they just life sucks, especially now in modern times. And God forbid if there is abuse in the environment, that your father is always screaming or your mom is uh, drinking all the time, because that makes everything just far worse. And then you get to be 10. Now, here's the thing you need to understand. You know, you have to be in the social environment. You may have a good amount of anger inside you. But should you express that anger in a way that is unsavory, unpleasant, crude? I'll just drop you from the class. You'll just lose your job. So what happens is you keep a lot of stuff inside you. Freud once remarked that every person you see out there, next time you walk around the lake, do not be deceived by people holding hands, especially in the 21st century, year 2023. Do not be deceived when people laugh. There is a volcano on the inside. It's ready to erupt. And most often it erupts without any warning. Do not be deceived by this man just sitting here quietly. He's a great man. It sucks to get old, man. It sucks to lose abilities. You want to scream. You want to shout. You want to go somewhere and beat the punching bag to death. It just doesn't do anything. Thank God he's just civilized. He just says, well, it is what it is, as Trump would say, the great prophet of the 21st century. You get to be 10. Your friend comes to you and says, I really like you. So, yeah. I like you too. <clears throat> From early on, you really understood intuitively, instinctually, that it's best not to trust anyone. You trusted your parents. They crapped all over you. You trust your mom. You trust your dad. You trust your siblings. You look at your life. There's no one around now. So you get yourself a girlfriend after a while. I mean, that's what you have to do. You don't like being alone. But you do something really, really interesting. You don't just have one girlfriend, you have four, <sighs> yes, maybe five. <clears throat> I think deep down, 
we have no choice but to be monogamists. You can only do one person. You can only have a meaningful relationship with one single human being. And deep down, all of us in this class desire meaningful things. And you can have meaningful relationship with 20 people. It doesn't work that way. Unless you're Martin Luther King Jr. Or Mahatma Gandhi. Or Jesus Christ. Or Abraham. Or David. Or Solomon. So what happens is that you say, you know what? I like my girlfriend. I want to love her, but you don't really go through this process because you have long lost the ability to love anyone. You can only like, and your like really doesn't have very much depth. And she calls you and she says, the great Pharaoh, I don't think I want to be with you anymore. You don't show feelings. It's like you're a rock. Not like Peter. You just, yeah. <laughs> it's like you're dead on the inside. And you say, that's fine. I'll have a savings account. Joanna, it's good knowing you. And then when the phone clicks, you call Janet. And just in case you're walking around the lake with your companion and someone eyes her, you may get jealous a little, but the truth is you don't have the ability to become attached to anyone. You don't trust anyone. You don't have faith in anyone. You're a solitary man. Big world, 8 billion people, and yet you have lost the ability to like anyone with depth that could lead to love. So you won't get jealous. In fact, you come to a place where you say, it's good to see you. You'll come to a place where you say, I am tired of this person. Uh, I hope that this guy who just passed me by will just come back and look at her again so he could just take her. Now you may think you're very enlightened that you're beyond all of those flimsy human emotions, but no, you just lack the ability to love. But there is more. You see, when you are attached or love just one thing, if I just love him, I invest all of my emotions, all of my future, all of my imaginations in him. Let's say I keep 20% to myself, the 80 goes to him. If on the other hand, I give him 10%, and I give him 10%, and give him 10%, him 10%, it means the following. Should he leave, he only takes away 10%. So you know what I do very cleverly without really knowing? I spread myself out. He only hurts me 10%. And I'll say, oh, if he had 80% of me inside him, Man, I'd say, Al, I'd scream, I'd probably commit suicide. But no, I won't do that. I spread myself out. In that way, no one has the power to hurt me. But we have investments elsewhere. But the point I'm trying to make is this. Jealousy is usually because you're attached to something. And someone is strong to take it away from you without your permission. And you better hope, man, you're invested in something where you're able to make stories with this person, stories about the future. That's good jealousy. There is another point that you should be aware of. If I'm your brother and we're both married and we go somewhere and for some strange reason you find yourself attracted to my wife, don't let me see that, man.
if you're ever attracted to something and that something belongs to another, you better hide it well. Human nature. I don't really know what it is, to be honest. We are, all of us in this class, are born in a physical environment. You know, when you're still in your mother's womb, if she's eating something or cooking something that you, you're still inside her belly. For some strange reason, that doesn't go well with you. You will kick her and you will tell her, I, I don't like what you're doing. Stop it. You're so impacted by your external environment, you know. If you were to imagine every single child that's born as a blank flash drive or a floppy disk, what happens is this blank floppy disk is going to be victimized by its social environment. It's like a clean, blank whiteboard in the back. What's going to happen? You enjoy rap music, so you're going to come and put rap music here. He enjoys classical music, he's going to put classical music. Okay? Someone just enjoys using the F word, someone uses the P word, whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden you realize that when you're 10, you're a collection of the social forces. Okay. Now, as long as you remain unaware, you will enjoy the sort of advertisement that lives inside you. And these are pieces of advertisement that's come to you from the outside. If you happen to be like her, there comes a point where you say, I've come to realize that I'm nothing but a collection of forces that were pushed into me from the outside. I'm beginning not to like them. It's like you come to this class, hopeful. It's an introduction to philosophy class. You're going to learn about these great giant philosophers. That's your expectation, but I don't give you any of that stuff. So you say, I came here with this desire and it's not being fulfilled. I want to drop the class. Right now you're okay with all the advertisements inside you, at least most of them. And then there comes a point where you say, I don't think I enjoy who I am and what I am. And what you're saying is this, I want to get rid of the advertisements inside me and look for new ones. I think what you really, you and I call human nature for the most part is, I'll give you another example. You know, um, if you go to the Inuit country, Eskimos, or if you go to, say, Yemen, when there is either in, say, certain parts of Alaska, when there is snowstorm, or in certain parts of Saudi Arabia, when there is sandstorm, what usually happens, the... The storm is so thick and so intense that you can't see two inches in front of you. So you know what these people do? They simply sit on the snow for hours. And what anthropologists have discovered in their research is that when these people sit, they're not angry, they're not frustrated, they just sit. And when the storm dies or goes away, if it is done, they just stand up and walk to where they want to go. Imagine uh, you want to come to Laney College at 7 o'clock or 7.30, and then there is traffic. That's a heavy storm. What happens to you? 
initially you're okay, then five seconds later you get frustrated, then 10 seconds later you get angry, 40 seconds later you begin to honk, a minute and a half later you begin to ram your car into other people. And you realize something really interesting. The emotions that live inside you, like patience, they are culturally manufactured. You turn on the TV and Beyonce is driving this beautiful car, topless. I mean, the car is topless. Okay, maybe she is as well. Okay, and her hair is just flowing. You know, she looks to her right, the beautiful trees. She looks to her left, the ocean. She looks up, the whales are swimming. She looks down, the angels are singing. You say, man, that's the life I want. Now, it's an advertisement for Mercedes. So you work at In-N-Out like 90 hours a week, right? You save like 100000 and you go to this place in Oakland and you say, I want that Mercedes. She looks exactly like Beyonce. And you grow your hair long, you know? And then you say, I'm, I live in Hayward. I'm going to go to Laney. Put the top down. She's going to drive. 7.30. 580 highway, right? You shower, you shave, you look really good, man. You're in the highway, you look to your left, cement. You look to your right, cement. You look up, it's cloudy. You look down, wet, you have peed in pants. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to get to Laney, like in 10 minutes? Nah, it's going to be an hour and a half. And you say, wait a minute. I thought that if I slave away, save money, buy a car like Beyonce, grow my hair long, I'll be happy. I'll have the ocean to my left, forest to my right. But this sucks. The culture sold you a definition of happiness that's just not real. Frustration, culturally manufactured. Now, if you were to live in certain parts of Alaska, or New Guinea, that if you're like over the age of 15, should you ever express your anger in a way that is unpleasing to the ears and eyes of your elders? Even if you're 50 years of age, you'll get reprimanded. That culture tells you, be angry, it's okay. Just don't express it any way you want to. You're not an individual. So most of the ways we feel, you know, our identity really for the most part, I mean, con consider this other thing. Look at the percentage of LGBTQ plus one minus 25. Consider that in California and compare that number to Texas. you'll see a stark difference. In California, for example, out of, say, 25 people, one belongs to LGBTQ. In Texas, 5,001. And then you kind of sit back and you have to ask some very, very serious questions. Is it the culture of California or is it the culture of Texas that represses people? Is it advertisement in California? Is it advertisement in Texas? Is California producing such people? Or is Texas not allowing such people to be produced? What is it? It becomes very, very, very complicated. Hard questions are always troubling. Creativity. Assalamu alaikum. Imagine, imagine you want to build a house. 
custom me. Your house, according to your desires, to your plans. You want to create it, right? What do you need? You need the base materials. You need lumber, you need concrete, you need shingles, you need nails, drywall, plaster, stucco, rebars. What else do you need? You need to know how to use them. Before you can be a creative, you need to have the basic materials first. You want to write a creative essay? How are your thinking abilities? How's your imagination? How have you been shaped mentally? Let's say you're angry and you want to be creative with your anger. Well, first you have to be an architect, right? You have to sit somewhere and map things out. Where do you want the bathroom to be, the kitchen to be? How many bedrooms do you want to have? Right? You're angry. But what are the components in your anger? Do you know the history? You can't just be creative just because you desire to be creative. The desire by itself is not enough. I desire to be young. It's not going to happen. I desire to lower my cholesterol. How is that going to happen, man? I need to walk every day for about an hour and a half. Discipline. You can't be creative without discipline. I'm not Mozart. And even if you wear, you have to be open to the muses, the gods up there. Here's the thing you need to understand about creativity. America is a crappy, crappy place. You know why? It gives people hollow dreams. You know, some people are just born to be gardeners. But because of the American advertisement, they imagine like they can be surgeons. And they, they don't have talent to be surgeons. So you know what happens? They will pursue being a doctor, but they will continue to be gardeners. They will never be a surgeon and they will forever hate being a gardener. It's a lose-lose situation. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Anybody, really. Just be ordinary. Be extremely ordinary. And let me tell you what ordinary means. Go home, clean your room, do your laundry, have a job, save your money, don't smoke, don't drink, don't do porn. Uh, have some relatively decent friends, be good to your parents, take classes, finish school. That's ordinary. Oh man, that's tough. First, do the ordinary things of life. Realize how complicated and difficult it is. And then if you want to be creative, fine. There are also, let me just say this and we'll go. The word passion, it's Latin. It comes from the word pasco. It means to suffer. And there are two ways that you will suffer. You will either suffer because you have pursued the wrong pleasures or you suffer because you're so damn creative that you have such intense emotions inside you, that they demand that you write, that you create music, that you have this child that lives inside you to come out and play. So you either suffer because you're authentic and creative, or you suffer because you're just a crappy human being always doing the wrong things. And the consequences are not going to be pleasant. Well, it's good to see all of you. Thank you for wasting my time. <laughs> okay, you guys, have a nice weekend. See you.